Hello YouTube, Captain Mac here and welcome to the first flight in our Oceana Union Airbus tour. There are in fact two of these tours that uh, the guys over at Mac Air have put together and they do such an awesome job on putting together these tours. In fact there are 144 different tours you can fly over at Mac Air. And I just got to say, man, I'm so, so thankful for the guys over there and all the work that they do and the amazing things they do to make Mac Air such a great virtual airline. If you haven't had an opportunity yet or if you're looking for a virtual airline that really gives you just a taste of just about everything, including uh, our professional division over there, if you're looking for something really, really structured and and realistic. Uh, I'll tell you what, Mac Air is the thing to check out. It is it is one heck of a great virtual airline with some amazing folks over there. They're not a bunch of selfish guys over there. They really just do a great job and, and I'm just so grateful for all of them. And there's a couple reasons that I want to do this tour. Um, really three reasons that I can think of off the top of my head. The first one is the uh, Airbus here. This uh, fly-by-wire A320 and these guys are over at Fly By Wire are doing just an awesome job with this thing. I really enjoy flying it. And we just haven't had a lot of opportunities to fly it in uh, any of the other series that we've been flying. So I wanted to do one of these tours that provides that opportunity. And that's all of these flights are going to be in this particular aircraft. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to flying around this, this region. So this Oceana Union Tour takes us... Uh, on a tour of all the countries in the Oceania region, Australia, New Zealand, and so on. And I don't even know all the countries there, to be honest with you. I've hardly ever spent any time over there. And I think on this channel, we've been to Australia maybe once or twice, and maybe New Zealand once, and I think that's it. So I think we really need to spend some time over there. And uh, the last thing, uh, the last reason is I want to give a shout out to my boy, Oss Flight Simmer. I'm sure most of you are very familiar with his channel. If you're not, go check him out. What a great channel he's got going on over there. I'm so happy and so excited to see how absolutely wonderful his channel's doing. He's a great guy and he puts out some absolutely fantastic content. I've known him for many years now and he's just, he's awesome. So um, he's he's in Australia. That's where the uh, Aus, Aus, Aussie, Aus Flight Simmer, I guess is how you say it, uh, but he's out there in Australia. Obviously we're flying in Air New Zealand, but uh, we're starting out in Australia. We're actually starting out in Brisbane. And so um, this is sort of my little shout out to him. I, I'm going to dedicate this series to uh, both Aus Flight Simmer and to the wonderful folks on the staff over at Mac Air. Thank you to all of you. I think you guys are fantastic. So with all of that said, what do you say we climb up in the flight deck and we get to work. All right, so those of you familiar with the channel, you know what's coming next. We're going to take care of this operational flight plan. However, uh, I am using PACX. I'm going to start trying to make more use of this. TFDI has put together a great little product here that really adds to the immersion. Uh, I think the, the one downside that I see to um, see to the program here is that uh, for me, I, I keep struggling to get the sound like at the right volume. <laughs> Um, and I don't even know if you can adjust the sounds on it. That probably, oh yeah, there it is, right there. So, so I got that going on over here. I apologize. That's uh, taking a little, taking a minute here. But let me get that started. Uh, and then we need to take a look at our operational flight plan for the day. And if you're wondering how we got to where we're at right now and what I'm talking about, I might have skipped through uh, in the editing process some of that. But I just started up Pack X really quick, played around with the settings for a minute uh, to try and get that working the way I wanted to. So. Uh, flight plan for the day, YBBN, which is Brisbane International, to Cairns International. Uh, I don't think that I mentioned, well, I might have mentioned that when I uh, when I did my introduction there. But either way, that's where we're flying today. Uh, cost index is going to be 85, air distance 879 nautical miles. Takeoff weight, we're looking at 151,374 pounds. And our landing weight, 141,525. So we're pretty heavy, actually, for this flight. Uh, zero fuel weights 133401 block fuel uh, we did load the fuel using the uh, load manager for the A320 for from fly by wire here block fuel is 18481 pounds remember i'm working in pounds uh, not in kilograms nobody's really mentioned whether or not they care whether i do uh, imperial or metric so i'm going to stick with imperial I'm supposed to get out of here 
So I got the times wrong here. So the scheduled departure time for the flight in A cars is 0600 Zulu, uh, not 0, 0, 0015 Zulu. So we're, ske we're scheduled to be off at zero, around 0, 06 Zulu. We're looking good. Uh, PAX is actually closer to 170, but I think that was the max that let me put in there, or maybe I set it on auto. 8,500 pounds of cargo. Payload is 35,700 pounds. We already talked about our weights there, and I've already put those into the sim. So with all that said, let me get this bad boy over here. We're in the aircraft. We're going to get things started up and get ready to push. All right, so let's start taking care of business here. First thing I want to do is hop over to my little EFB here. I want to just check something real fast. We did load fuel using this guy. Uh, baggage truck never showed up, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I forgot to press the button. Fuel truck can go away now. We're done with him. Uh, I've got the flight plan already loaded into the uh, MCDU. We'll show you that here in just a second. Just looking at the uh, cockpit preparation checklist. I didn't do the seatbelts yet because I think it starts the cabin announcements. As already mentioned, we did put in the flight plan here. We've also uh, gone ahead and added our departure, which is the Bixad. Bixad is probably how you say it. Bixad 1 RNAV departure. All the waypoints line up uh, properly. The uh, altitude restrictions are in there as they should be. Over on our performance page, I am going to do a flex temp today, so the outside air temperature is 14 degrees Celsius. You can see that right there. I also verified that with the ATIS, and it matches up. So I did look at a couple of calculators for this, and it just apparently Airbus won't release the actual data, so <laughs> it's kind of a toss-up apparently. So, um, But, you know, the general rule is it has to be higher than the current outside air temperature, but lower than 49 or is it 59? 59 degrees Celsius uh, at sea level. And we're pretty much at sea level. We're 11 feet above sea level, so I think that counts. So I just put a number in there, 20, and that was just to do a reduced thrust takeoff. So that's where we got that from. So we're looking at uh, 135 for V1, VR is at 136, and V2 at 140. Transition altitude is 10,000 feet. Uh, the ATIS told us uh, 239 at 25 knots on the wind. Uh, and 299 or 7 on the altimeter. We've got that in there. Uh, manage speed mode, manage heading mode. We're going to go ahead and uh, change our altitude here. Now our altitude restrictions are at or above altitude restrictions, which means we need to be over them, not at them necessarily, right? So if I have an altitude restriction of at or above 10,000 feet, I can be above 10,000 feet, I just can't be below it. Uh, okay, that was fun. That thing's popped up on me a couple times. I don't know why. Uh, 38,000 feet is our cruising altitude and everything else on here is pretty much ready to go. Okay, so I will say real quick, uh, on the last flight I did in this thing, I didn't realize that for the um, TCAS, you don't just turn it to TARA here, you also have to turn it to auto on here, otherwise it'll continue to say that the, T, uh, the TCAS is in standby. So there's that, we've got that taken care of. And we are ready to push and start, believe it or not, except that we're waiting on passenger loads here. It never did open those other doors, apparently, because it still doesn't show those cargo doors as being open. That's fine. I'm going to let them finish loading the passengers, and then we're going to close things up, push and start. Courtesy to other passengers. Also, be sure that the aisle is clear and sit down so that way other passengers can get by you. If you are seated in an emergency exit row, please review the exit seating responsibilities and the safety guards provided for you. Please make sure that you are able and willing to perform these actions. If you're not, please let a flight attendant know so that way you can be reseated. Now's the time to get out any last minute text messages if you need to, but we ask that once we depart from the gate, you put away any laptops or tablets. Thank you and welcome aboard. So obviously, uh, we're getting ready to get going here. <clears throat> I don't know why the jetway is like in front of us here, but... There it is. Uh, go over to our checklist here. Let's take a look at our before start checklist. Parking brake will obviously be released for pushback. Takeoff speeds and thrust have been uh, set accordingly. Windows are closed on both sides. Now let's get the beacon on up here. There's the beacon light right there. <clears throat> Wing lights can stay off for the moment. Why APU is, is now available. Yeah. APU bleed can go on right there. Bring this guy right here. And I'm just going to go over to Pack X real fast and I'm going to change the. Uh, crew volume down just a little bit and let's go ahead and set up our pushback here we are going to be taking runway 19 less we need to go nose right tail left uh, one of the tricks that I learned is that if you turn this little thing off after pushback it causes less issues so we're trying to remember to do that let's plan our pushback here 
So you can see it's going to be a little bit of a complex pushback, which is kind of cool actually because this uh, this program is pretty good at this, right? So let me just, uh, I'm going to try and follow the line as best I can here. Slightly compulsive nature, obsessive compulsive nature. Okay, request pushback. Cockpit to ground. This is ground. Stand by. Okay, now let's go ahead and make sure that we're on the APU here. We should be, um, and we can turn ground power off. So APU gen is on, APU bleed is on, ground power is now off. And let's take a look at our before start checklist over here. Uh, or we already did before start, it's after start we need to take a look at next, and obviously we're not doing that yet. So we're ready to start engines, we're just waiting on them for pushback. Okay sir, the bypass pin is installed, all doors and hatches closed, and all ground equipment is removed. The parking brakes are set, you may lift. Parking brake set. Lifting the aircraft. We are cleared for start and push. Okay. Cleared for push start. Please release parking brake. Alright, parking brake's coming off. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. It will start in the sequence. Okay, fuel pumps are on. Last time I did it wrong, it's got to go over to ignition. We start with engine number two. Flip her up. The packs are automatic. Everything's automatic on this. The Airbus is super We're easy to fly. To when you are. So Good we, sh afternoon, we should be hearing some announcements back there. 100. Our flight time will be roughly two hours and two minutes. Now that the cabin door is closed, please make sure that all devices are in airplane mode and your large devices are now shut down and stowed. Please fasten your seatbelt and make sure that all tray tables and seat backs are in a full upright and locked position for departure. Cabin crew, prepare cabin for departure. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the flight attendants for a safety demonstration. When the seatbelt light is fastened, please make sure that your seatbelts are fastened low and tight across your lap. To fasten, insert the metal fittings into one another and tighten by pulling on the loose end of the strap. To release your seatbelt, lift the upper portion of the buckle. We suggest that you keep your seatbelt fastened throughout the entire flight as you may experience unexpected turbulence. There are several emergency exits on this aircraft. Please take a few moments now to locate your nearest exit. In some cases, your nearest exit may be behind you. If we need to evacuate the aircraft, floor-level lighting will guide you towards the exit. In the event of a decompression, an oxygen mask will drop in front of you. To start the flow of oxygen, pull the mask towards you. Place it firmly over your nose and mouth, secure the elastic band behind your head, tighten the straps if necessary, and breathe normally. Although the bag does not inflate, oxygen is flowing to the mask. If you are traveling with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your mask on first and then assist others. Keep your mask on until a member of the crew advises you it is safe to remove it. In the unlikely event of a water landing, a light vest is located in a pouch under your seat or between the armrests. When instructed to do so, open the plastic pouch and remove the vest. Flip it over your head. Wrap the straps around your waist and buckle at the front. Pull the strap to tighten. Alright, while well, she's finishing up that brief there real quick, let's take a look at our taxi brief because uh, you can see there's a lot going on here. I'm not going to read all that, don't worry. Uh, but you can see there's a lot there, right? <laughs> That's crazy. We're not going to read all that though. Let's just take a look at the basics here. Eight is for us, 125.5. Brisbane Center on 25.7. Delivery on 18.85. Ground. Uh, we're on the south side, so we would say 22.25. And tower for 19 left is 20.5. And then there's departure, depending on which one they hand us off to. We're pushing back over here. We're going to take uh, probably C2. Uh, and then we're going to take that over here to Bravo. So we're going to take that over to Bravo. And then we're going to take Bravo all the way down here to Bravo 1. And then hold short at Alpha 1 for our departure. Now our departure briefing is pretty simple stuff here. It's the Big Dad 1 RNAV departure. Uh, the max speed below 10,000 feet is 250 knots. And you can see here it's pretty straightforward. We're going to depart here on runway 19 left out to city. Hang right over here to Togan. As you can see, it's at or above 5,000 feet. Continue around to the right here to Alba, max of 240 knots until we get to Alba. And then as we continue around to the right turn there up to Amble, at or above 10,000 feet there. Now this one says at or above 6,000. That doesn't mean we have to descend. That is for the departure over here on one left going straight out you got to be at or above 6,000 there obviously we'll be above that since we already have to be at or above 10,000 when we cross Amble then it's the bay then it's Buck Boo I'm assuming that's how you say it and then Big Zed and then on course from there all right so we got two good starts let's go ahead and finish cleaning up the aircraft getting ready for departure here let's get the uh, wing lights on 
and strobe light stays off for the moment we can go put the taxi light on there the APU bleed and APU can go off now let's just double check our overhead and remember dark cockpit so lights are bad no lights are good everything's looking good uh, yep always jumps back to that view there we are on the engines page down here but we haven't done our takeoff config yet we're gonna press that yes I know it's because we don't have anything set yet right so we need that uh, we need that guy it, it's we didn't have the flaps we didn't have the trim we didn't have anything because I should have done that beforehand <laughs> so we're supposed to be up 1.0 if we go to the flight controls page there we go trim up 1.0 we're supposed to be max on the auto brakes there we go we do do the cabin check real quick there we go back down here and the takeoff config test again there we go now it's normal let's do our flight controls check right really quick full left full right all the way up all the way down neutral and then full left hey they're actually kind of working full right and neutral fantastic jump over here to our tablet really quick any ice is off ecam status has been checked pitch trim and flaps are set rudder trim is set to neutral we're good to go on that taxi checklist flight control check is complete flaps are set to one radar and predictive wind shear is on engine mode select actually needs to go back to normal okay right there i'm not sure if you have it uh in ignition for takeoff and then ecam memo no blue we verified that already that'll take us to our lineup checklist which means let me get track IR on here there we go track IR is running so looking at our pushback we actually could have pushed back a lot further around the corner there uh, but we didn't so it doesn't matter let's go ahead and uh, get the park brake off and away we go this thing starts rolling on its own immediately I didn't add any thrust or anything so we need to swing her all the way around to the right. C2 is just off to our right over there. Probably a little bit of chop. We'll probably get a little bit of chop because of the uh, other aircraft. Uh, because there's quite a few in there. We'll see how that works out. But I'm going to go ahead and taxi out. And then we'll see you all here shortly. Alrighty folks, here we are holding short of the runway. Let's just make sure we got everything ready to go. We've already done our takeoff config. It's telling me uh, TA only on here. I'm assuming that's because I'm on the ground. I'm not actually sure about that, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not that familiar with Airbus at the moment. I'm getting better at it, but still learning a little bit. Anyway, we've got our spoilers are armed here. Our flaps are set to one. Our trim is set. Let's take a look at our lineup checklist. So takeoff runway is 1-9 left. TCAS is set. I don't know what else to do. Packs 1 and 2 will be auto. So we'll let that do its own thing there, and that's going to take care of that. Okay, so as far as I can tell, we don't have any traffic on the approach. So let's go ahead and get our landing lights on here. Strobe lights can come on, maybe. If I can get to them there by my turnoff lights and then taxi lights to the takeoff position. And we're ready to pull out on the runway. Let's let the... Uh, uh, take off. Oh, there we go. He did it for me. <laughs> I didn't even have to tell him. Probably from turning the landing lights on, to be honest with you. Just a tiny bit of thrust to get her moving here. And it seems like it starts out slow, but this thing will accelerate with zero thrust. It's kind of crazy, actually. So, And we'll roll her onto the runway and go straight into our takeoff run. All right, so that little jump you just had there was because the uh, uh, the recorder was recording the file, or uh, was uh, putting the recorded file into a different folder. And I've got, a, I've got the folder open where the file goes so I can see that the recording has started because I've actually had... When early on I had videos where I thought I started recording and I didn't and I went through large portions <laughs> without actually recording anything so anyway it, it I didn't think it was recording so I came to a stop and then I tried to start the recorder and it stopped the recorder so I had to find the file really quick <laughs> so we're on the we're in the right folder now I don't know why I was doing that okay let's roll right into our takeoff here uh, let's go to climb first let him stabilize a little Yeah, it's just because I haven't put it in uh, toga yet. There we go. Toga. And we're off. 25 knot wind. There's 80 knots. This is a D-rated takeoff. And it's still, it's moving. There's rotate already. <laughs> Positive rate of climb gear coming up. This thing's got some juice, folks. I mean, it goes. 
right, up, up, and away here. So far, so good. I'm liking everything. Let's go ahead and bring those flaps up. Should hit our D-cell height here pretty soon. Yeah, that's a D-rated takeoff. So, at 20 degrees when it was 14 outside, we got to lower these to climb. Uh, that put us at, what, 86%? Just a tiny bit of nose down trim there. A little bit more. That's looking good right there. Alright. Doesn't get much easier than that. I'm going to just go ahead and put the autopilot on now so we can take care of our after takeoff stuff and get track our off here. There we go. Let's take a look at our after takeoff checklist really quick. Oh no, we don't even have one. It's just the, uh, the approach uh, checklist is the next one, right? Okay, fantastic. Well, we can unarm the spoilers at this point or the speed brakes if that is your preferred term. Uh, landing lights are going to stay on until we get above 10,000 feet, which means, oh, gears up, flaps are up, we're good to go. That means, ladies and gentlemen, you guessed it. It is time, once again, for some obligatory elevator music. Alrighty, folks, we are a little less than 100 nautical miles from our top of descent, and um, obviously we got to take care of our arrival and our approach briefings. We got to set a few things up, but I just want to show you something. Uh, I don't know why I didn't think of this before to uh, determine our top of descent. So for our arrival, you're going to see that we're going to use the uh, Upolo 8A arrival, and at Apollo, Upolo, I think that's how you say it. I want to be at a certain altitude. Let me show you what I've done here. So this is my distance right now from Upolo. This is on the progress page. When you first click on this page, this box, this box is empty. You can put in any waypoint you want and you can change it. When I look at my flight plan at Upolo, I want to be at 6,700 feet, right? Now this is just, I, sh I should have thought of this sooner. So just use your, uh, your uh, descent calculator over here, right? So I want to be at 6,700 feet. We're at 38,000 feet right now. So at 98 nautical miles from wherever I want to be at that altitude, I need to start my descent. So if I put Upolo down in here, 
when I want to be at 6700 and then put that in my progress page well when I'm 98 nautical miles from Upolo I start my descent see how easy that works I don't know why I didn't think of that sooner okay so with that in mind let's take a quick look at our arrival and our approach briefings and we'll get set up for the descent here so as I mentioned already it's going to be the Upolo 8A arrival uh, the 8 is for us 131.1 airport elevations at 10 feet transition altitude is at 11,000 feet I need to look and see if I can change that in there I don't remember but anyway we're gonna come in here at Upolo again I want to be at 6700 feet there my reasoning behind that has to do with the approach which we'll get to in a minute so for us it's gonna be Upolo Bercy and then Sunny and Sunny is gonna be our transition to the approach so unless our weather changes drastically uh, we're going to be taking runway 15 and so this is going to work out nicely <coughs> so let's look at the approach itself here then let me zoom that in for you because there's always a lot going on so ATIS again 131.1 Karen's approach uh, we're say 18.4 tower 24.9 now I know we're not using ATC right now but I still hold out hope for that day that we'll actually be able to use ATC properly so <laughs> I'm gonna always read these off because they're part of a proper briefing anyway so tower on 24.9 ground on 21.7 localizer frequency is 109.90 and I didn't say it but it's ILSZ or localizer Z runway 15 final approach course 150 degrees with glide slope intercept at Kasna 2900 feet and uh, decision altitudes down below airport elevations 10 feet runways at 9 feet for the missed approach you're going to turn left so when it just says turn left that means you turn left immediately on the missed approach uh, to 015 degree track so we're not using um, a specific radial off of the OR for this we are using a VOR though uh, intercept the 15 DME arc from the CS VOR right so 15 nautical miles out that's your distance measuring equipment that's DME so so we're going to turn to 015 and we're going to fly out till we hit a 15 nautical mile arc and then uh, climb to 3700 feet is directed by ATC and then ILS missed approach requires left turn as soon as practicable but not before ICS MM which is uh, right down here ICS MM and you can see that on here as well so MM is basically your uh, your missed approach point so there's two of them so this would be well we'll look at the minimums but that's that there's two missed approach points it probably has to do with a uh, cat 3 ILS if that's even viable on here either way there's two of them so you don't make the turn before you reach M ICS MM so I mentioned Sunny when I was talking about the arrival as we come from Bercy to Sunny that's why I mention it because that uh, that sets us up for our approach so it's gonna come from Sunny over here to CF 15 which is 16 nautical miles out uh, and then on in from there it's very straightforward 3,000 feet here um, it's actually 3540 3,000 is the minimum so 3,000 feet is our minimum altitude here. We should come in here at 3540. I've got that altitude constraint in there. We start our descent. Glide slope intercept technically is here at Kasna, 2,900 feet. Continuing on from there, 1,220 feet at 38, uh, which is 3.8 nautical miles from the localizer. Okay, it's going to be Pappy Lights on the left-hand side, and we're looking at 381 feet as our minimums okay let me zoom that out get that off the page here let's make sure we're ready for the descent so you can see here we are 123 nautical miles it's asking us for destination data now we're 123 nautical miles from Upolo so that's great because I know I have time to work with yet um, but it's at 89 nautical miles from Upolo is when we want to start our descent right so really quickly here uh, let's do destination data it's in the performance section that's uh, descent and then right here so I actually still don't have the weather so I'm not gonna put that in yet I'm just gonna leave it on this progress page for the moment and let's get this MCP set up so 6700 feet notice that it's going in thousand foot increments so you just have to click this guy back here there we go and then 6700 Remember also that to initiate the descent, you got to click on this guy right here. So the down arrow that'll initiate it, up arrow is supposed to give you control, I think. So it's like pulling it out versus pushing it in. That's the idea there, anyway. Okay, we don't have a descent checklist per se. We just have these procedures.
That's what I thought he said, F4. Okay, let me turn that off real quick so we don't have to listen to it over and over. That's actually really helpful for us because we can set that up now. So we're ready for the descent here. We still got a little ways before we need to initiate it. So let's do this performance page really fast. Okay, there we go. We've got our information entered in there. It is going to be a full flaps landing approach speed. It's going to be 127 knots. I'm going to go back to my progress page for the moment because I'm looking for that 89 nautical miles. Uh, point was it 89 or 98? I forgot now. It's 98. Yeah, so we're actually closer than I thought. All right, so you can see we're almost to our 98 nautical miles here. So we'll jump up here. We can go ahead and initiate that descent now. That'll work just fine. Did I actually click it? I did. It's starting to descend. And you see, we're just now starting the descent, and we're at 97 now. So it, for whatever reason, that initial descent takes just a minute. So as I was thinking through on this, and I'm just going to wrap this up, and then we'll see you back here on the approach. As I was thinking through on this, um, you know, I was I was so busy trying to determine my descent points and all of that during my last flight, and I thought about it. I thought, why not just rather than constantly fighting with it, uh, you know, back and forth trying to figure out when to descend, why not just put the altitude constraints that I want in there? So I have to be at 3,700. It's sunny. Uh, so that's where I chose 6700 at Upolo from. You saw there was no altitude restriction there. And so I just did an in-between at Bursi of 5000. And then we maintain 3700 as we come around the corner. And then at Local 11, it's going to be 3540. There's glide slope intercept to 2900 and so on. You guys get the point. That makes it a lot easier, uh, especially when you're doing the work of two pilots. So there you have it. I'm going to break away, and I'll see you back here on the approach. Alrighty folks, we just crossed Upolo. I managed to mess up the descent somehow. Everything was set good and then for whatever reason I, was, I, I just uh, changed it and I was like, nope, go now and yeah. So we're lower than we should be. We're at 3,000 feet. It's, it's not the end of the world. It's fine. Um, we're just going to hold this until we get all the way up around our turn and then uh, we'll we'll descend to 2900 so we're just we're we're lower than we should be much earlier um not super thrilled about it uh, but again i'm not as familiar with airbus so i'm still learning a lot of stuff so please be patient with me so we're going to continue to fly the approach here you're going to see that i'm going to skip ahead at points uh, because there's no need for you to just sit here and stare at a screen that's not doing anything. If you guys don't like me doing that, if you'd like me to stay on the video even when I'm not talking and just so you can see what's going on, let me know down in the comments. Uh, give me the feedback and, and we'll try to accommodate uh, as many people as possible. So with that said, let's continue with the approach. All right, as you can see, we're uh, making this turn. So this is sort of our intercept point. We're gonna arm the localizer here, <clears throat> let the aircraft swing around. Let me get a more usable view. That's the one we're looking for. And track hour coming on. And let's get that centered up for you. All right, so we got flaps one out there. We're just waiting to intercept that localizer. And uh, once we do, We'll bring that speed down a little more. Probably just go back to uh, letting the aircraft manage the speed. Now we can put this at 2,900 now. And so at loc uh, 11, we're supposed to be at 3,540, but our minimum is 3,000. So we're at 3,000 holding that right now. We're at 29, like 40. So <laughs> um, I want to put this back into manage mode. I'm going to let it descend to 2,900, and then I'm s we're done with it here until it intercepts the glide slope. So there's the localizers locked on now. You can see that. So now we can hit the uh, approach switch over here. There we go. And so now we're waiting for the glide slope. So blue is armed, green is captured. And so once we capture that glide slope, because I don't want to I don't want to fly it too too slow. I mean, you can see we're pretty far out already. So that's one thing I've done in the past is I fly these approaches like really slow and I mean, we're goodness we're still you know 11 miles out we're more than that actually we're 14 miles out so I don't want to take five hours to fly this so we're gonna fly it at 180 even after we capture the glide slope and so I'm gonna do the same thing we might fast forward a little bit here and then we'll just continue on all right so there's glide slope capture there and uh, I've gone ahead and put the speed back into managed mode Let's go ahead and get that landing gear out. 
It should start slowing the aircraft pretty substantially here. We'll see. Yeah, it's starting to slow down now. Next setting of flaps coming in. Let's arm the speed brakes. And let's take a look at this approach checklist. 2,500. Barrel ref is set. Seat belts are on. Seat belt sign is on. Minimums are set. Auto brake is zero. Engine mode select is normal. Landing checklist. ECAM memo checked. All green or no blue. Did I check it off? I did. Okay. All right. We're looking good here. So let's get the next setting of flaps coming in. Remember, we are landing flaps full. Our V approach is 129. Just letting the aircraft do its thing, flaps full. There it is, coming down nicely. It's looking good here. Alright, let's let the aircraft settle. Oh, we do have a. I didn't do the cabin check, that's the blue. There we go, cabin check complete. Uh, sometimes when the Pack X talks to me, it talks through my headset, so you might not hear it. <laughs> Just something to keep in mind there. So, all right, let's uh, take the autopilot off. My airplane. Of course, as soon as I do that, like every time, the first thing it does is it just the nose drops. <laughs> I have no idea why. All right, we're just a tiny bit high, so we're just bringing that nose down just a wee bit more. It's looking good though, looking fantastic here. So I can see the pappy lights. In real life, I'd probably be able to see those clearer and we'd be visual at this point. I can see, it looks like we got pappy lights both sides. I think I didn't mention that during the approach briefing, but either way, pappy lights both sides. I got red and white, so we're looking good. I'm on the diamond still. There's the outer marker. And uh, yeah, we're looking fantastic here. Just a tiny bit of crosswind off the right hand side there. Get just a wee bit high. There we go. Right back on the center. Looking good. So right now I'm just kind of following my diamond. See, I'm, I'm definitely too high. I'm trying to get her to descend just a bit faster here. Just doesn't seem to want to. That's One bringing time. us back on right there. Now you can see the pappy lights much more clearly. That's going to make this approach a little easier. So we're going to go visual at this point. The wind just sort of dropped out on me there. It was at 9. It dropped to 3. There we go. Now we're looking good. That's where we want to be right there. About 700 feet per minute. And pushing her right down the center. Let's listen to the rest of the callouts. I don't know what's with, this, with the stutters. I'm still getting them. If anybody knows the solution, I'd love to hear it. That wind shifted a little further. See that? We're down to two knots, one knot. 500. All right. We're still looking good. We're fantastic. Let's bring her in. 400. Minimum. Continue. 300. One hundred. Ended 50, up a little high. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Ten. Five. That was actually, uh, other than not being on the center of the of the runway there, like it just drifted on me. See the wind changed again. The wind gusted up to uh, are those reversers coming in or what? The wind gusted up to five knots at the last second.
gentlemen, we have reached our destination. The local time is 6.26 p.m. and it's currently about 13 degrees Celsius. You can now use your mobile devices. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a complete All right. stop. Alright, not too shabby, huh, Remember folks? Good smooth landing, minus 92 feet, feet per minute. I always like smooth landings. Makes me feel like I'm doing something decent. There's those, see that stutter there? Maybe it's just the AI traffic, you know, I've got the AIG traffic going on. Maybe it's that, but I don't know, I just keep getting it. It's driving me a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs here. Alright, let's uh, bring those off. We'll leave runway turn off lights on for the moment. Let's put this to taxi. Oh, the click spots are so small. Alright. Flaps are up. Let's get around the corner here and take a real quick look at our after landing checklist. Actually, we don't even need to do that. Radar and predictive wind shear needs to go off. Let's uh, remember this guy down here, right there. I don't even know if I managed to hit it there because I can't hardly see. I'll make sure that's taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and taxi it in, and I will see you folks when we're ready to shut things down. So it doesn't appear like I have any ground guidance out here. Oh, I just turned that off, didn't I? No, I turned it on. <laughs> well, if there was ground guidance, they would have been very unhappy. All right, let's move this up here. Looks like there aren't any jetways here. I'm sure that's not accurate. I did find a, an add-on for this airport. I may go ahead and add it. The only reason I didn't is because it had a lot of other libraries and stuff that you had to get first. But it is free, so I may take a look at that. Let's go ahead and get that parking brake on at this point. APU should be started. Let me get the track IR off. There we go. Let's get down here where we can see something useful. So the APU should be up and running, which it is. Let's make sure we're on the APU bleeds here. Uh, we're not going to go to external power quite yet. Let's uh, get the engines off here. If I can find the right view. There we go. And then we can turn that seatbelt sign off. Passengers can start disembarking. And we should hear the pack X start talking here shortly. There we go, that looks good. Alright, a uh, little bit of cleanup work here. We can turn that off, turn that off. Uh, let's go ahead and switch it over to ground power now. I'm guessing that the reason we don't hear any movement is because... Um, because we don't have a gate. We don't have a jetway. Let me find it here. What am I looking for? Uh, this guy. And so let's just go jet bridge. Yeah, see you hear moving as soon as I do that even though why those click spots are a little... Okay, there we go. We got all of that taken care of. And uh, what else we got here? Oh, I wanted to put it on ground power. That's the last thing we need to do here. Put it on ground power. AP bleed off. Window heat off. Master switch off. Fuel pumps off. Take care of all those. You can turn the passenger uh, air supply off. Emergency lights unarmed. Now, let's take a look at those checklists really quick and let's wrap this up. Uh, after landing checklist, we did that. Parking checklist. Parking brakes are chocks. Both are taken care of. Uh, engines are off. Oh, I didn't turn the wing. That was the other thing. The lights. The lights. Uh, nav, and, nav and logo actually stay on for now. Wing lights off, beacon lights off, and strobe lights are already off, right? Nope, they're not. Awesome. So we came in with strobe lights and everything. That's how we roll around here, you know. Okay, so that takes care of lights. Fuel pumps are off. That takes care of our parking checklist. We're not going to secure the aircraft, and that means that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is our first flight in this tour. We're going to press on with these. I thought it was a really good flight. I enjoyed it, actually. Uh, I've never flown, I don't think, either one of these airports, first of all. Now, the landing was smooth as silk, minus 92 feet per minute. However, uh, we did drift pretty hard towards the side of the runway. That wind was actually a little gustier than I expected because we went from 9 knots down to 0 and then right as we are crossing the threshold it went back up to uh, like 6 or 7 knots. So kind of crazy there how that worked out but we ended up with a really smooth landing either way and so that was fantastic. So uh, the next flight 
uh, well, it'll be coming here pretty soon. Uh, some of you may have noticed I've been releasing flights uh, about every three days, so you should see some more coming out shortly after this one uh, for the various series we have out there. So if you enjoyed the content, do give the video a thumbs up. I know you hear it over and over again, but it actually helps a lot with the algorithm. It would be a huge help for me if you would give the video a thumbs up if you really enjoy it. And if you think that I've earned it, hit the subscribe button, click on the bell to get notifications, and that way you can be notified when all of my content is released. As of the recording of this video, the mystery contest is active. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, you definitely want to go take a look at it. There's going to be a giveaway associated with it. And that is it. That is all. And no more, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, as always, keep the blue side up, unless otherwise instructed by ATC. God bless you all. Have an absolutely fantastic day.